what is up? Welcome to Build. I'm your host, Matt Forte. We're here live at the Build Studio in New York City. Starting today, right now, a YouTube Red. The flames of an iconic rivalry 30 years in the making are rekindled and burned bright in Cobra Kai, my friend. That's right. LaRusso and Lawrence are back at it, and I gotta hand it to them, man. This show is not only a very satisfying scratch for every nostalgic itch you got, but it's so much more than just a revival. Watching the amazing cast of Fresh Faces apply the Cobra Kai mentality to modern-day bullies and struggles with just the right amount of karate-ass kickery, man, this show is nothing short of fantastic, I gotta tell you. I watched like eight episodes of it, I'm obsessed. Uh, here to talk about how they pulled it off. Get this, we've got uh, producers, writers, directors. Uh, Josh Heald is here. John Hurwitz is here. Hayden Schlossberg is here. How about that? Make some noise. That's pretty cool, right? That's cool. And joining them up here as well, stars of Cobra Kai, William Zapka and Ralph Macchio. Make some noise, come on. It's amazing. Embarrassment of riches, people. Heck of a lineup. So we're gonna bring them out in just a second. But before we sweep the leg, we're gonna take a quick look at the trailer. So, thank you. Uh, Luke, let's go ahead and run that clip, man. Who is it? Bonsai! Daniel LaRusso here for LaRusso Auto. We are chopping prices on all of our inventory. Yeah. Johnny? I knew it was you. This is Johnny Lawrence. He and I go way back. Oh, this is a guy who's ass you kicked. If you want to get technical, I kicked his face. <laughs> Where you going, come oh, I didn't know you guys were trying to buy beer. I'm oh, oh. <laughs> hey! Watch your car, man. Get the hell out of here, loser. <laughs> ah. Was that like Taekwondo or something? It's karate. Do you think you could teach me? I'm driving home from work yesterday, and in this strip mall, I see... After 30 years, I thought that guy might have changed, but he's still the same prick. I heard you beat up a bunch of teenagers. I didn't beat up any teenagers. I kicked the crap out of a bunch of assholes who deserved it. Thinks he could bring Cobra Kai back to the valley? Yeah. Not on my watch. You want those kids at school to keep dumping things on your head? You want all the girls to think you're a wangless dork? You're gonna be my karate teacher? No. I'm gonna be your sensei. I'm gonna teach you the style of karate that was taught to me. A method of fighting your pansy ass generation desperately needs. Okay, let's see what you got. She's a girl. And? I'm sorry. Oh, are you okay? What the? Oh. Girl's a natural cobra. Johnny, you and I, this, we aren't done. Oh, you guys better make a ridiculous amount of noise. Cobra Kai! Oh, man, guys, welcome. Thank you so much for being here with us and hanging out with us on Build. And congratulations, as I, as I was saying backstage, I love this show, man. You guys really did. It's not easy to make great television, especially with so much of it right now, and you, you knocked it out of the park. The show is fantastic. So so congrats on that. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. That's the whole show right there. That's it's it. all That's ten, it. yeah. Hope yeah, you guys what? like it. We're hoping no for surprises. season two. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to start right up front. Uh, William, Ralph, talk to me, guys. How, after 30-some-odd uh, you know, years, whatever it's been, what was it that you guys decided, all right, now's the time. This is the one. Let, let's do it again. Let's bring it back together. Let's get the Okay, you back. can take it to first time. I always usually take this first, but I'm tossing. What was the question? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, after 34 years, 
uh, it's there's something about the timing of this with uh, just with the streaming video platform now that it's a, it makes sense to tell a story in this kind of format. Yeah. Um, as far as the characters go, I, I've been waiting for this for 34 years. I've been training ever since uh, for the rematch. Yes, right. He's been he's been waiting for the opportunity, <laughs> and uh, he has seized it. Let me tell you, um, uh, a, a big part of it has to do with these three gentlemen behind us who uh, just had the most fresh and and relevant angle in for something that is right for now, but yet still embraces the nostalgia and the legacy of the original film. And uh, it was so well thought out and presented to both of us. Um, I think Billy heard it first, and then uh, after my meeting with the guys, uh, I, I called him and he just picked up the phone and he goes, I was waiting for this call. <laughs> <laughs> I really was. I almost wanted to tip you off and let you know it's coming. But. And, uh, you know, it took, there was a little back and forth and, and questions. And it was very, the great thing about John, Josh, and Hayden, how collaborative they are and how respectful of our uh, uh, opinions and the protection, uh, how protective we are of those characters. And uh, so that's a big part of it. They're great listeners as much as great storytellers and, and visionaries, so. Yeah, well, you hit the nail on the head. They are fantastic storytellers. Let's let's talk about you, you three fantastic storytellers. How how did this all come together? I think I read something doing my research this morning that there's a billboard for Full House that inspired one of you or something. <laughs> yeah. Is that you know, actually? You know, it was. How did that? Well, first of all, you know, th this is something we've been talking about for a very long time. You know, Hayden and I went to high school together. Josh and I went to college together. We've all been. We were all separately huge fans of Karate Kid. And, you know, in our early 20s, we were living in L.A., we were screenwriters, and, you know, a DVD came out for a special edition which had, uh, you know, all these uh, interviews with everybody. And, you know, we were huge fans of the Cobra Kai and, and, and Billy uh, before that. And in the interview, he was talking about how it was really important to him when he, when he was approaching the character that he viewed himself as sort of the hero in his own story, yeah. and he had kind of a raw deal. And you see the glimpses of that in that for in that film you see you know in that final tournament when his sensei says to sweep the leg you see this vulnerability in his eyes and he hands the trophy at the end to daniel so even back then we started talking about wouldn't it be amazing to just do a movie that would uh you know basically tell be, it would be called cobra kai we get to see through johnny's eyes and you know I think we, we were just always obsessed with the cobra kai though from that original movie they're just like so badass i mean imagine going to a town everybody has to deal with bullies but bullies that ride motorcycles and are good at karate. I mean, that's just, it was crazy. And so I think we just always loved the idea of these characters and yeah, like to, to find the human element and deal with themes of bullying today and think about where Johnny is today. Like we got into the idea creatively. But it was, and, and, it, yeah, was it, it seemed, you know, it seemed unlikely that we'd be able to revisit these two characters again in the franchise. You know, the franchise had moved on uh, to the Jaden Smith reboot and had, you know, was seemingly going in a different direction. They did a remake? <laughs> there, there, was, there was a little movie that came out uh, a few years ago. Uh, but, you know, once we saw kind of the, the world of streaming television and how you could tell longer form stories and you could bring back characters. And yeah, we, we drove down the Sunset Strip one day and saw a Fuller House billboard and there was Kimmy Gibbler. And we said, okay, well, if Kimmy Gibbler can be on a billboard, uh, these guys should definitely be on a billboard. Johnny Lawrence, absolutely. And it made us think more, less of like this, this tight and closed movie and more of this world that we could kind of re-enter. Well, it, it's kind of hard to argue with that logic, right? If Kimmy, I mean, yeah. That's just pure You mouth. mentioned, um, and, and we hear this a lot too, when, whenever an actor has to portray a quote-unquote bad guy, they don't perceive it as a bad guy because you're supposed to play it, you know, uh, how would this person, this human being behave? What I love about this show, and again, we were talking about this a little bit before, is you don't just get a glimmer. Everyone is, is very complex and human, and there's all these different facets to the story and sides, you know. Uh, you're not just a bad guy. You're not just a good guy. You're just you guys trying to figure this out. Was that, well, when you started reading and seeing what was going on, was that the thing that got the, the engine turning over and like, oh, this is exciting. I get to expand these characters in this universe? Yeah, that was for me when they, when they th these th th amazing guys pulled me to a Mexican restaurant and didn't let me have a, one chip. They just <laughs> pitched me. Th like, we spent $15 on I it. mean, they, they shoot the waiter away. I mean, I, they called me to a blind meeting and then this whole thing came out. But yeah, what was the question? <laughs> was that the exciting part that, that, oh, I get to really flesh out this character. This is a character that I, yeah, I played my, a young my, person. My one check was that, you know, that Johnny wasn't going to be driven into the ground. And he wasn't going to be the biggest bully of all time. They weren't going to make him super evil. It wasn't going to be a repeat of the Karate Kid, but now. And they assured me that wasn't the case and that they had a fondness and a love for him. And 
uh, you know, and a view on him and uh, that he would be more of an anti-hero, but he's flawed. And um, that was what was super appealing to it, um, to step into it, because I had no interest in going and just playing, you know, the guy on a motorcycle kicking, uh, kicking uh, the kid that stole my yeah, girlfriend. Yeah, he, he, he's done that before, and he's Biking done it well. <laughs> um, you know, we, from early on, we spoke about the, 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 the interesting way of, um, of having sort of a dual, that these characters are dual protagonists and antagonists at the same time. And so, and also dealing with, you know, from LaRusso's side, his midlife uh, uh, crisis at that point where everything seems great for him, but Cobra Kai pulls him back into uh, uh, this, you know, spiral of his kind of feistiness that he will not allow this to happen yet it winds up being the thing over the arc of even just season one that actually helps him find maybe some balance that he's lost in the past 30 years and in the absence of Mr. Miyagi and that void in his life um, so it, all those conversations are what fueled the decision to be this is the time these are the right people to do it with and this is how we we balance it you know you got oh I was going to say, I mean, really, it's the three of these guys behind us. Their vision and their passion, and it was, a, you know, they, to, to take these characters and put them in their hands, and they're, 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 it was amazing. And uh, Something, uh, talking about how great you three are, uh, let's... The, and, and we're done with that, right? Yeah, Did we do enough? We, we, well, let's talk to Josh. No, 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 no but it's true. We have it. more time for this. <laughs> okay. A few more minutes. Yeah. Uh, but you do a, a fantastic job of balancing sort of uh, the nostalgic element of it and giving it a new take, a new fresh story, new fresh faces and all that. There's a ton uh, of great little references peppered throughout, a fantastic window-washing joke, and you deliver that line perfectly. <laughs> and then just the way you turn the Miyagi training sequence on its head. There's so many great things you guys do. How did you find the balance between, like, was there a point where you're like, all right, we're dropping too many references. We got to pull back on that a little bit and focus more on the There story. just had to be, you, you, it's, we, we cared about the story that we're telling now. And if there's a way that we can have a little fun homage and a callback that helps tell this story, well, then that's great. And so, so people who are watching it who haven't seen Karate Kid, they'll watch it and they'll get sucked into the story because it deals with bullying and yeah. it's got martial arts and it's got this interesting rivalry. But if you know the Karate Kid, you know, it's, it's going to be, it's on, it's on another level. So, I mean, you, you, the, there'd be times where we'd be like, okay, you know, what about this callback? And it should be like, okay, well, this is just for the sake of nostalgia. It had to serve some greater story. It was a good thing that there were three of us. Yeah, we, yeah. <laughs> we, we called, you know, we kind of called each other in check and kept each other in check. And we used restraint. Our, our word kind of in the writer's room with this was restraint. You know, just don't do something gratuitous because wouldn't it be awesome to do this Karate Kid thing? And when doing the Karate Kid thing, do it earnestly. Don't do it with like a wink and a nod and a, hey, we're doing the thing now because it's time to do the thing. Yeah. Uh, and if we can kind of meet both of those criteria, it felt like, okay, this is something that carries over, that fits into the story we're telling now. We, uh, you know, speaking of doing the thing and all the, all the fun little references, we catch a glimmer of it in the trailer, but the, the original headband makes right. an appearance. How uh, w were those original props that you guys had held on to? Did you have to refabricate a lot of old stuff, or we wound up refabricating refab uh, at least from the stuff that I brought, like the headband that I brought, which I have the original one, and the uh, and the trophy, the All Valley trophy. So what we did is I either took pictures of stuff or I brought there because I didn't want to use it and it get lost by you know prop guy three hundred four, and then it's like where did it go? <laughs> um, so and they did a great job of, of replicating that but based on having the uh, original there so it's very cool. what, whatever we didn't have that we wanted to recreate we were literally like freeze framing you know the the movie frame by frame and saying no that shade is a little bit more blue and a little bit something and we were trying to be meticulous within reason wherever we could and you guys you had access to more than just the dvd right like you had <laughs> this pretty amazing I, I saw the other day it dropped us uh, some footage that had never been used before well, that was the best yeah. you know we right when we uh you know signed up to do the show we uh we contacted sony we said can we find out if we have the dailies from the original movie can we see all the footage that's there mm -hmm. and they said okay well we got to find it and apparently it was in these salt mines that it's been buried for like 30 years actual salt mines. actual salt, salt, actual, that, actual that's, salt that's actually mines. where they found billy too yeah yeah <laughs> yes uh but uh but I'm nice, yeah, i'll see you at the tournament <laughs> don't worry i'm gonna get hit a few times you wait we ain't over yet but uh yeah so so they got us this footage and, and it was a crazy day when we got to see we'd see like you know, six cameras all playing, all running 
at once, you know, covering the tournament. And you know, that was a big thing for us, particularly in that opening scene where you've seen that, you know, classic fight so many times. And, you know, our story, we wanted to go in through the Johnny Lawrence angle. We wanted to see it through his eyes. So now we had all this new footage where we could see that classic fight but with 17 or 18 new shots in there. And, you know, we also, you know, recreated the, that fight as well. The very end of it, we shot, you know, new footage. So that first, uh, that first uh, scene is a combination of stuff you've seen in the movie, dailies have been buried, and some new stuff we shot. And we didn't know what we were going to find either. We, we hoped that we would find something that was capable of showing this, this sequence from, from uh, the Johnny Lawrence POV. But the, first, the very first footage we got, it was coming to us in like drips and drabs. As they would find something, they would you know, look at the negative and say, okay, this looks like something, and send it our way. And it was the close-up of uh, Johnny getting kicked in the face. So crucial. That they did yeah, in yeah. slow motion, like what, 30 times, 40 times in a yeah. row with various, you know, spraying him down. And, yeah. 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 <laughs> and we said, okay, this is something. 20 we years to get those around. kicks out of my head. <laughs> well, I was going to say, the truth, this is a movie that was made in the time when there was only a couple of ways to get that shot. Did right. you, how, how many, did you get kicked in the face for real at least once by accident or like? No. No. I stayed no. away from him. O only I could vouch for getting kicked in the face. You got kicked in the face. But he yeah, got, because he didn't adjust he, your face he, when he, I was throwing a round <laughs> kick. <laughs> he said, he he said, I, told you he said I walked into it. <laughs> <laughs> so somewhere between the two of us lies the truth. So we'll just call a truce. We, <laughs> now, we did the crane kick a bunch of times. We, he did, did, we did even close-ups, and you were standing on a ladder. I was on a ladder. you got just tired throwing of doing the, the jump. You know, yeah, they were like feeding him water, the IV dripping him. That's it. I gave them five jumps. That's it. Otherwise, get me a ladder. No, we just did it all in my head back. And, and uh, Avils, John Avilson. What I love about the new footage is my parents are in the stands, my real mom and dad, and it's awesome to see them. So they're in the movie now. And, yeah. That's amazing. So, yeah. You, did you guys, <laughs> you mentioned earlier in the beginning you've been training for 30 years for this, but legitimately we see a little bit of action out of you guys. Have you kept up over the years a little bit? Did that imprint something on you at an early age? Like, I think I'm going to try to keep up this karate thing and I'm going to learn more about it. Or has it come in and out of your life over the years and now it's back in a big way? I kind of abandoned it when I was, you know, done yeah. for the most part. But right. it is like riding a bike generally, except it, it hurts a lot more the next day. You know, and you have to do a lot of stretching and, and warming up. Um, you know, it's uh, times have changed a bit, yeah. but uh, fortunately, we have this uh, fantastic young cast in the show that represents the next generation of Karate Kids or Cobra Kai, and uh, they they have a lot of heavy lifting to do. So, um, but we have to, you know, we have to stay in shape. It's so funny, man. When I was watching, when I first read the synopsis and I found out that it, it was centering on uh, on your character, really, I, th I was immediately reminded, as someone who watches a lot of TV and stuff, of the How I Met Your Mother uh, string of episodes where you guys... Uh, was that... Is that the first time in a long time that you guys kind of did something together? Was that show? Because there was an episode where, where the two yeah. of you were in there. Because we've been waiting for this reunion for a while. But I feel like that was the first time. I was like, holy crap, it's them again. Yeah. yeah. How'd that come about? How'd you guys get involved with I that? Got, we both got phone calls. I got a call from the, the casting department asking if I wanted to be on an episode of How I Met Your Mother. And, of course, I said yes without even knowing what it was. They sent me the script. I was playing myself, and I was a clown. And I had no lines. <laughs> I'm like, what do I? But then at the very end, <laughs> I, I say yes. Yeah, you know, it's like, okay, I have absolutely no. It's the safest bet to give an actor, you know, get him on TV and give him no lines until the very end, and I have to wipe my face off. Yeah. And then they wrote a part for Ralph, and I was like, well, I don't know if Ralph's gonna to do it. And then we went a little back and forth on it. I've always I was a fan of the show and the fact that they teed they've teed it up for seasons. The whole Barney Stinson concept that the real Karate Kid is William Zabka, not this nerdy Jersey Italian guy. And, we had a moment uh, after the show when we finished shooting, and I was still in my gi, and he was and I said, "Get behind the bar." Remember that? Yeah, we took just, some great. We took pictures. some shots. It was just something like about the two of us being there for real, and and we sat at the McFadden's bar. And I had him take some pictures of him pouring me drinks in my. I was in a gi. suit pouring him drinks. He's yeah. still in the gi looking. Why we walked away? Where there's something we, in this picture. We still love yeah. this picture. And, yeah. and interestingly enough, when I, we met John, Josh, and Hayden, I mean that was, we were toying around with, okay, how can we do something cool? Maybe we'll start small. And it, fortunately, it was uh, usurped by a much bigger idea that's uh, that's out there for the world right now. Yeah. Uh, before we, we got to turn it over to the audience in a, in a second, but before we do, I'd be remiss not to talk about the, we mentioned it briefly, the awesome younger cast on this show. These kids are phenomenal. As complex and as much as you guys flesh out your characters, the kids are the same exact way. They, they're telling an uh, uh, equally complex story and they do a fantastic job. How, how did the three of you guys find them? What were you looking for? Did, were you surprised by any one of them and then rewrite a character for them? Stuff like that. Well, we were looking for authenticity first and foremost. Uh, you know, most of the, the teenage characters on the show are actual teenagers 
teenagers, uh, which was really important to us. But you know, it's you know, we tried to write you know three dimensional characters that, and when we were auditioning, we would have them do scenes from early in the season and scenes from later in the season, so you could see you know the range and see how they'd be able to to move along with the arcs. And you know, the people, uh, the the cast that we have on the show, you know, Sholo and and Mary and Tanner and you know the whole the whole group of them. I mean, several of them. They went, the first audition, you, we would just see them. We're like, okay, that's that's it, that's it. They're perfect. Yeah, I mean, when we cast Miguel Diaz was the, was the first um, of the younger cast we we cast, and it was that was a big thing that we didn't know who was going to walk in and you know be this this character who was going to become you know Johnny's student. And uh, Sholo walked in, and uh, and he did both sides, like John said. He did the beginning of the season scene and the end of the season scene, and we saw both aspects of this character and the journey that you know he was going to take. And and r- right away, it was like, okay, that's the guy. And we kind of had that feeling about you know everyone we cast along the way. Yeah, and they're so great because they, um, all of them, and other and other characters, uh, s- smaller parts of the young ensemble too. So, have uh, they take such pride because they're a part of something that w- is already a brand and has and has a legacy about it? And you could see that even at this young age, they they're not taking it for granted that right. they have this opportunity. It's very cool to, to see that. Did they're the good way, kids. Did the weight of that legacy ever weigh on you guys? Like, oh man, that, like this was always a fun thing you <laughs> yeah, talked about, but it, now the real deal is they're here. Like we're making this for real. We we. It was not never. I mean, up. yeah. I mean, in the sense of like we would kill ourselves if this turned out to be like below our expectations but we just had extreme confidence the whole time that we would you know we were just like we're going to make this show awesome because you know we have the actors there was no fear in this dojo it was the only it was the only way out like we yeah we like Hayden said like we would not pursue this if we felt like we were going to break it and if we did break it we would feel awful so there was there was never like oh my god I hope we don't do you know something that's terrible it's more like yeah, we're going to do this because I think we have the right way into this. Well, you guys, uh, I said it once to say a million times, you totally nailed it. The show's fantastic. Congratulations again. We're going to turn Thank it over to the audience. Thank you so much. Uh, but just Thank to reiterate, as if you didn't know, all the episodes right now, YouTube Red, May 2nd, that's today. So go ahead, start watching. Uh, we've got some microphones out in the room. First one's right here. Hi. Uh, I got to see a couple of the first episodes, uh, and I can't wait to see the rest of it. And I could feel the tension between you guys just from the first scene, even in the trailer. Uh how was it like when you were performing? Was there actual tension like while you were actually in the characters and were you able to let go of that um, between uh, after the show or after scenes? I was always fine as long as I had a few more close-ups. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. We, uh, the first scene we did together, and we talk about this all the time now, because it was uh, the scene where I enter the dojo, and it's in the trailer, and, I, and, uh, and we're standing on the mat, and it's just... Uh, it's one of my favorite scenes in the whole Mercy. series. It's interesting because Ralph and I, Ralph and I, Billy. But when we turn into the characters, they're very live. And when he walked in the dojo, it was definitely a, a real tension, and it was it was organic, and it was like the first time Johnny and Daniel saw each other, and you know, all these years, it was alive. Yeah, it was there was, there was tension. But you know, when they say cut, you know, and then it takes a few minutes, we punch each other a couple times, and we're and that's right. it. <laughs> and also, it's interesting about that is we. Uh, you know, Billy had shot a couple of days at that point, so that that scene was my first scene in the entire he's series. In it. He's so right. he's Steve. I felt like I was visiting him, yeah. just like I was visiting the Cobra Kai, like I was visiting this franchise again. So, I you know maybe that's why that performance is pretty good right there. Was it that by of, design, guys, or is that just how it worked out? It, it, it worked. It worked out that way. The thing that was crazy though was on set, set everyone, everyone knew it was a big moment. moment. Like, like everyone, everyone who was working on the project from from, from top, top to bottom, bottom. We, we, we were all like. like children yeah. like we can't, can't believe that this is happening right, right now and everyone was just sort of like looking at each other like i can't i, I can't believe it and you felt it immediately that you were all they were all been taking selfies of each other <laughs> guys just stay on the marks Basically. Basically. but you can hear a pin drop i mean it's it's quiet anyway when uh, you know when you're filming something but i mean everyone from all departments just just trying to just watching this you could cut the tension with a knife even the bus drivers outside slowed down and they said something <laughs> going it, it was on. it was fun it was the fun planes just, went a little slower it's crazy it was fun just pitching this show Bones wouldn't stop yeah. with them you know just going around town with the, with the pitches and seeing people react as we were going into different like all the different studios to pitch the show it's there's this energy when the two of them are in the room. 
That's got to feel great, huh, guys? Like, after all these years, there's still that much love out there for these characters that you played all these years ago. It's, it's fantastic. Yeah. I mean, and who, who knew, you know? It, it, very rare that a film lasts yeah. for 34 years and reinvents itself with each generation and becomes a, people, a piece of people's childhoods, you know? And that's just a, a blessing to have. We've got time for two more. Next one's going to come from all the way in the back. Hey, this is uh, for William as well as Ralph, but anybody can answer this. How difficult is it to not get typecast in characters that are either universally loved or universally, uh, I don't want to say despised, but disliked after all these years? I'll let Ralph take that one on the dislike. Uh, he has no idea. <laughs> um, I always say, listen, as far as being typecast, I mean, you listen, in this business, if you're cast, you're lucky, you know, and everybody has a type, so... You know, that's the main thing. If somebody sees a movie, you're lucky if somebody sees it. It becomes a, a, you know, a classic. It's unbelievable. I, I don't know if you steer away from being typecast. I mean, I think you want as an actor to express yourself in different ways. And in this show, I get to do that in, in more ways than I've had to. But um, I don't know. You embrace what's, what's, what comes your way in this business, you know. You have it to navigate. It chooses you a lot of times. You don't, you don't get to say, you know. Yeah, that's right. I mean, you really, you try to navigate through that. But if you have the opportunity and you somehow have success and can make a living at it, that is, uh, you know, it's very rare. So as you get older, you begin to understand and embrace that as far as like, okay, I'm tired of their old, he's casting me as this. Well, you're always working then if they're always casting you as this. So you have to... You know, take the you want to do as many different things as you possibly can, um, but uh, that, that's just that's part of it. And as uh, you know, it comes around, it goes around, it comes around. So for us, it's kind of coming around in a very sweet way, and uh, it seems like everyone's excited about it. Awesome. We've got uh, time for one more question, and it is over there. Hi, how's it going, oh, Ralph? I love the fact that you named your son Daniel. I, that always like hits home. Uh, but I had a question for both of you. How, was it easy to dust it off and get back into karate mode? Like, have you been maintaining it all through these years? Just curious about that. Um, yeah, I, 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 like I said earlier, um, once, once they, yeah, it's, it's sad to say, once they stopped paying me, I stopped kicking. <laughs> no, uh, but not necessarily. I kept it up a, a slight bit, but uh, I was always the recipient of being beaten up. Right. So it was like, you know what? Maybe, maybe checkers is the way to go. <laughs> um, um, uh, so, but I respect the martial arts and all, and all that's behind it, the Eastern philosophy, you know, all those Miyagi-isms I really believe in, yeah. less than strike first, strike hard, punch me now, talk later. But uh, it's kind of cool. That's what's so cool about the, the two styles. Um, uh, so I did, but getting dusting back off, dusting it off, and uh, again, it's like I said, it's like a, riding a bike, but it takes a lot more work to get up on the bike, and it hurts a lot the next day. Um, so. I can say when these you guys the put back on the, the karate for this show, though, they went all in. Our production office shared a wall with uh, the training room, I guess. So we would be, you know, breaking story and writing episodes and prepping. And on the other side of this wall, we would just hear horrible, you know, grunting and kicking and, and punching for the you know, entire length of the show. Um, and, you know, the first time we went out and saw, I think Billy's uh, karate uh, appeared first in the season. And the first time we went out to just see a, a rehearsal, um, he was blown away what the stunt guy was doing. And uh, it was like, okay, all right, this is, uh, <laughs> is going to work. It's pretty awesome. Let me let me ask you one. Thank you for your questions, by the way, guys. Those were amazing. We're going to wrap it up in a second, but I was thinking of something when, uh, just a moment ago when you were talking about doing the karate and respect it and all that and like the Miyagi-ism sticking with you throughout your life. When you're a part of a film uh, that has those iconic lines and those moments, do you ever, like the rest of us in the world, find yourself doing something menial at home, like, I don't know, dusting, and then you just think inadvertently, wax on? Mm -hmm. wax, ah, damn it. Like, does it ever peek into I'll your head the same way much. it does for ours? I'll say this much. <laughs> to this day, it's probably the first time I've said this, so I'm like, now that the show's out, it's yeah. all good. Yeah. Um, you know, you it's spill milk. Clock. You spill milk in the kitchen, or you drop your your drink in the family room, and you know, you go grab the paper towels. I don't think there's a time I'm not cleaning something up <laughs> that I'm like, yeah, if there was an audience here right now. <laughs> so that's that's the truth. That's the truth. Oh, Sweep the leg ever pop up for you? What's going on? Uh, just at seven o'clock every morning on my alarm clock. That's it. <laughs> Sweep the leg, time to get up. Yeah, as I wake up. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, no, those, they come at me so much that they, I don't need to think about it. Yeah. Well, 
Thank you for that. Thank you for indulging me on that final question. Uh, I'll remind everybody again, it's today, May 2nd, YouTube Red Cobra Kai's out there. You're crazy if you haven't already watched it. Uh, so check it out. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise one more time. Join me in thanking Ralph Baccio, William Zapka, Josh Hill, John Horowitz, and Hayden Schlossberg.